What's up everybody, Rabbit Hedgehog here, and we want to thank Law Tigers of Oklahoma, we want to thank AGV Sport USA, and we also want to thank Doug Crawford Ams Oil for sponsoring our channel. So check them out in the description below, give them a shout out, and tell them Rabbit Hedgehog sent you. So at any rate, what's in front of me is not an everyday occurrence here at the Hedgehog Garage. This is a motor scooter, not to be confused with a moped. No, this is not a 50cc or less motorcycle with pedals. No, this is a motor scooter. This is the Freedom Scooters Veracruz 150. Now, the cool thing about Freedom Scooters is that I found them just on Facebook at random, seeing an ad, and then realizing they were out of Choctaw, Oklahoma. So I contacted them and asked if I could take out one of their products. And they said, sure thing. And they gave me the top of the line, the Veracruz 150. This one here, as you can see, has the brown leather saddle, the diamond stitch. It has got the chrome. It's got all the fun stuff, all LED lighting all around. Really slick looking machine, kind of like that old classic Italian look. So the cool thing is, is that Oklahoma City is also a very underserved community of motor scooters. And now we have a player that is from Oklahoma that can jump in in the fray. Because in reality, even our bigger dealerships that offer the full line of most motorcycles still don't carry the scooters. And I don't know why. And I get that in some cases, Oklahoma's very wide open spaces. It's not the most urban of cities or states or anything of that nature. It really is indicative of having something with long leg travel. Well, the thing is, a bigger motor scooter like a 150 that's capable of 50 to 60 miles an hour is capable of doing that kind of travel which means that there should be no reason that people ignore these because motor scooters are generally lighter. They're generally, you know, pretty decent on fuel economy. Like this one can get up to 90 miles per gallon. They're usually uh, really well designed with interior trunks and other places to store your items so you can carry them long distances. This one comes with a back rack with all the tie down spots and everything ready to go. So there is a lot of, of positive things to say about a scooter that for some reason gets ignored around here. And this all comes for a price of about $2,500. And you get all of that. Tell me a motorcycle that has the saddlebags, that has everything ready to go for $2,500 that you can do the same things with. I promise you, not going to be very, very many. And if you find them used, probably not going to be working right either. So a good place to start, especially think of it this way. If you've been hurt, and you've got a bendy bit that's hurt, like your hip, your knee, or your ankle, or anything like that, and you've got to go over the side of a motorcycle, or you got to lift up the weight, or you got to do the other things that come with motorcycling, a scooter is much lighter, and you don't have to throw a leg over. You simply just have to put your leg right there and step in. So it has that nice step through design. Think of this as that Razor scooter that you had as a child in elementary school with a seat on it, versus a bicycle with an engine in it, which is basically what you're looking at with a motorcycle. You have that straddle saddled seat. So this one is going to have all the nice little chrome and everything that you see here. It also has passenger ability as well. You can kick those out and your passenger can sit behind you. So it's really well thought out as well. So this company, Freedom Scooters, started about two years ago importing these, and they've actually spent the time to find the right company to import them from. And not only that, they actually spent the time for CARB and EPA certification. So you can buy this scooter in all 50 states. Now, right now, they are limited to two dealerships in Oklahoma, and that's Synergy Cycle Works in Tulsa and Maxi's Motorcycles here in Oklahoma City. And this would be a fine little dude to have with you. So let's go ahead and let's take a walk around of it and show you the features. All right, so the Freedom Scooter is powered by a 150cc GY7 Xenon Honda clone engine. It comes with LED lighting all the way around, Kenda tires, Gates belts, NGK spark plugs, and lots of top-notch quality equipment. It's got that nice classic Italian style scooter lines. All right, take a look at that seat there real quick. Pretty cool looking. Now what we're gonna do is we'll show you what we got going on here. 
in terms of storage. All right, so you turn that to the left. Pops the seat. Pop that open. This is where the battery is. You have almost enough space to do a large full face helmet in there. So some smaller full face helmets might fit in there, but it does have pretty ample room to put other things in there as well, especially groceries and things. Toolkit, owner's manual right there. Go ahead and close that. Down in here. You can see you have two little cubbies here. You can put your phone in there. You can put your paperwork in there for your registration and stuff while you're riding. I've got my glasses in there at the moment. You can see right here that it also has a USB plug. So you can actually charge your cell phone on the go and you can put that in there as well. Now that's not my quad lock. That's actually the CEO's quad lock that's on here. So I don't actually have the quad lock on there. You can just simply close that up. You can see a little bag clip right there. Kind of look at the front real quick with the lights on. Kind of a cool, unique pattern of light right there. Like I said, it's LED all the way around, nice and bright. See that right there? And there you go. So on the control surface here, of course you've got your throttle, you have your front brake, engine cutoff switch, engine start. Then over here, you have your back brake, your bright selection, your turn signals, and your horn. Up here, very simple console. You have a fuel gauge, you do have your clock, you do have an odometer, your turn signal indications, your bright selection, and your service engine with an analog tachometer. So very simple setup, very simple overall machine. So the next question usually is, how does it ride? Well, let me tell you about the week with the Freedom Scooter Veracruz 150. And what a week has it been riding? This little Veracruz 150 is a fun, sweet little machine. And I do not understand why people have a hatred for the motor scooter when in reality it's sometimes all that you need i mean you can be out here on you know, more rural roads you can be out in the city just kind of goofing around and you can use this for either or it makes for an absolutely pleasant ride on any day i mean if you're feeling kind of out of it and need something to pick you up this is one way to do it right here there's a big popo he's as big as a scooter but i found it just one of those things like you, you get it in the garage and you have all this other stuff you have all these exciting machines, all, all like the FTR and the V7 and everything like that. And then you just you just want to be simple for the day. So you go out and you throw the key into this one, start it up, twist the throttle and head out. And that way you can just enjoy a nice, pleasant ride. Because sometimes it's not about going fast. Sometimes it's not about screaming at the top speeds that you possibly can or anything like that in some cases with a motorcycle motor scooter like this having that smaller engine you're always taking it to its limit and it's much easier to do so so therefore it's much more fun to play at the limit with a machine like this than it is to play at only about half the limit of an FTR and that's what the cool advantage of this is because you can start having a little bit more fun and a little bit more grin grinning and uh, some laughter and some other things because I, I mean this little thing is a ball to ride now your posture on it as you can see in the videos before you're pretty much well straight up knees come out feet go down you're pretty narrow into the bars 
but your, uh, your uh, arms drop from your shoulders down to your elbows and pretty much straight out. But like I said, it's very narrow. Now with this thing having such a small wheelbase and such small tires, the flickability on this thing is ridiculous. It's just because there's not very many actual motorcycles that have this kind of wheelbase in this small of wheel. Only the Grom, the Z125, and maybe the XSR125 has the same size of wheels, but they're still not as narrow. The narrower wheels on this little scooter really make this thing uh, agile, <laughs> put it that way. And of course you have the disc brakes on this one and you come up to a nice quick stop. The brakes work very well on this. And of course with it being a CVT transmission and directly engaged in drive, engine braking isn't bad as well. But that doesn't tell everybody behind you what you're doing so you might end up with somebody saying hello. Now the one thing is that we got some open speed here. We'll go ahead and we'll show you what it will do going up to top here. And like I said, you could get up to about 60 on it. Let's see, we're going to get an indicated 59 at around 8,000 RPM before we start going back up this hill here. So you get close to 60 miles an hour, but it does like to run between 45 and 50 all day long. You can see we're climbing the hill and we're kind of maintaining that speed and we're around 67, 6800 RPM right now. And with that continuously variable transmission, it just kind of keeps it in that same ballpark most of the time. Very rarely do you see it get up to near eight or nine. There is no red line indicated on the tachometer. Yeah, another thing that completely shocks me, of course, this is not going to show it right now because we're actually on a brand new road. This road was never paved until like two months ago. So another thing that completely shocks me on this thing is how well such a tiny little wheelbase and suspension set can handle our roads here in Oklahoma. As you all know, and as I have talked about many, many times, Oklahoma roads are trash. There is not really one that is smooth, and to be honest, even though this is brand new paved, it is still bouncy. Because I don't know what it is about us and roads here, we just don't know how to build them smooth. One thing about it is we also got the roller coaster style roads, as you can see from the hills and the ups and the downs. And you can see how this thing performs even with my weight on it, and only around nine horsepower. And it seems to do just fine. But back to the suspension, it does very, very well. It's actually very comfortable and it's not as harsh as I was expecting. I was honestly expecting a lot more harsher bumps and sharper jolts and everything than what I have been experiencing on this machine. So that was a pleasant surprise. It's almost as soft as our Van Van 200, and that thing has really long travel suspension for a tiny 200cc motorcycle. But it doesn't have, you know, a non-traditional fork. It doesn't have an engine on the back wheel. It literally is a motorcycle. It has a single monoshock in the rear and a traditional style fork with travel, and this one's making do with a scooter style suspension set. But it is comfy. And the seat is absolutely comfortable too. Now you will notice I'm not gonna do a passenger on this. Let's be honest here, I'm six foot tall. I have a 32 inch inseam, but I also weigh about 210 pounds. So if I was to put a passenger on there, I would have to keep that passenger rather small and light no matter what, because we're pretty much gonna max out the vehicle's 350 pound capacity. However, it is set up for a passenger. And if you're not gonna take it out and do the high speed stuff and all that stuff, then you can definitely take a passenger with you. Say you bought this machine and you're gonna use it as your little lake traveling vehicle and you have grandchildren with you or your child or you know your spouse or whatever, then you can go around the lake 
with ease with this thing. And that's what we're kind of going to do right now. Take it around the little lake road here. Absolutely great day to start fishing, sir. I agree with you. Look at that glass smooth lake out there. For once, we don't have any wind, which that's an extreme rarity here in this state. But it just likes to burble along, and now we're on more of a broken road, and it's still nice, comfortable, and pleasant. I have really found no complaints on this machine whatsoever I have just decided to take it out and just have nice little pleasant cruises at night in the morning going to work doing everything I can with this thing like it was my own and man I'm telling you I don't care if I got laughed at because I'm a bigger guy on a smaller machine some of my co-workers were laughing about the moped but I don't care. Guess who's in comfort and guess who's having fun? <laughs> See, I'm hitting those expansion joints there that's under the asphalt from the old concrete road and it's just bouncing right along and no complaints from it whatsoever. And like I said, the steering on this thing is actually incredibly good. And with the smaller, thinner tires, it tips over real easily. It doesn't take much to turn this at all. You can even bust out a pretty good U-turn on it. Despite the fact I don't have a clutch to finesse, I've kind of figured out how to get this thing done and into a realm where it needs to be. See, this little thing just happily goes right along in the turns and just smiles about it. You can't ask for anything more from a machine. Now I have ridden the Honda PCX 150, which is the same size of engine, but some different setup and stuff. It's a little bit bigger scooter. It's more substantial than this one. And I will say that, you know, I, I don't know what it is. I think it's just the shorter, smaller charm of this one. And I like it a little bit more that the Honda just doesn't have the, the little bit of soul. This one, is carbureted versus fuel injected and the PCX is fuel injected. Its engine's a little bit smoother, not as coarse. You know, it's one of those things that Honda's been bu building smaller engines for ages and they have kind of the, the market cornered when it comes to refinement of small engines. But this one, just a little bit of character goes a long way, like it feels more like a machine more like something that you would ride it's got a little buzz to it but it's still awful smooth like you can still see through the mirrors and everything most of the jolting you see is this horrifying road that i'm on that's the only thing really moving those mirrors around but like i said this little guy takes roads like this like a champ like an absolute champ you hear me bouncing around probably on the external mic because this thing is bouncing really hard on that road. And it didn't care. It is happily burbling along. I've noticed it's got enough metal in it to set these things off too. If you get parked right on it in the right spot, it does just fine and gets that sensor to trigger. This is actually one of the only scooters I've rode, but the last one I was on did not set off anything for the life of it. It was too much plastic. Whereas this one's got more metal into it somewhere and it's definitely setting stuff off. So now we're running down a state highway to Guthrie, Oklahoma, enjoying a nice little pleasant cruise. Seeing we're getting up to the state highway speed that's 55 right now, we can actually hold that. And it, you know, it's just a nice little comfortable ride. It doesn't get any more or any less buzzier at speed. It holds and maintains 
the tempo the whole time. Which is nice. So you know it's running the whole time. It really does feel the same no matter where you are except for idle and going. As soon as it's going, it feels exactly the same the entire time. But as you can see, it is nice and stable. One hand flickable. And just an enjoyable little ride to go about on. For real. I, I mean, I really enjoyed taking this out just to have some fun with, just to go do some chores, just to grocery shop, whatever. It was so much easier to get into and hop on and just twist and go. It really, really made a difference. I never realized how convenient a scooter really is compared to a motorcycle. Because with a motorcycle, I have to gear up, put a backpack on usually. A couple of my machines do have some bags on them that I can put stuff in. But for the most part, they don't. So you have to wear a backpack. You have to carry weight on your back. You have to jump on it and know how to finesse a clutch and do all that stuff and you know you just have to think about riding a little bit more you have to remember to use all four appendages whereas on this one you only use your hands so it's just a little bit more convenient to jump on something that immediately has available the storage the waterproof storage at, the, at that. And just the simple use of it. It allows you to scoot into town and take a cruise around the main street or stop over at the store over there and pick up some items. Just enjoy it. And I believe that this is where this little booger shines the most. Is riding around in town 35 miles an hour. just allowing you to enjoy the sights of what's going on around you especially if you're in an interesting place like Guthrie where it's a historic city have some cool places to look around at this is not a bad way to explore it and you get great gas mileage doing it too Whereas some motorcycles, eh. <laughs> Looking at you, FTR, begging for fuel every 100 miles. All right. Pulling into the main downtown here. to a halt and here we are you know the one thing that it took me a moment to get used to was you know if you're sitting on a hill your back brake on a motorcycle is your right foot and I like to you know sit there with the right foot sitting on that brake and holding that motorcycle on the hill so it doesn't start traveling backwards on you so you can roll off the throttle and ease off the clutch and do all that stuff without moving around and this one's a little bit different. You come up on those hills and uh, which brake do I use? Because I've been doing that quite a bit and I finally learned to just keep my left hand in place on that brake lever. And that way it will hold it on the hill.
Now another nice advantage to having a scooter versus a motorcycle. Most of your motorcycles, they have the engine of course right there between your legs with the gas tank sitting on top of it. Whereas the scooter here, <laughs> they're looking right at it. I've got some good waves on this thing. People, people loving the egg as I like to call it right now. But anyway, back to that. Uh, you had the gas tank on top, you had the engine right there between your legs. It puts a lot of the weight on the top end of the motorcycle. Whereas this one, the gas tank is down below there. The engine is back behind me. And even on a hotter day like this, you don't feel any heat coming off of the machine at all. You're just able to tour around and you're not getting anything toasted by anything. Most motorcycles, no matter how little heat they put out, you're still feeling a little bit of it, especially at this kind of temperature. But this thing has been, it's been flying around in the 90s and almost hundreds and it doesn't seem to have a care in the world. And right now I'm just kind of settling back and enjoying the ride because it really is that pleasant. It's a nice place to be and for $2,500 you really can't beat the, the deal on this thing. This thing's a steal at that price. You know, and there's some other things that is actually really well thought out of as well. You, you, I mean, you got the little tires on here, but you also have the 90 degree valve stems on it on both sides. So that way you can easily air your tires up and check pressure. I mean, they really did think this one out when they brought it in. I guess the only ho-hum that I might have is that right there. Depending on when you shut it, either this side's gonna be slightly out or that side's gonna be slightly out, but then it will latch. I haven't figured out how to get it to latch with either side together and in. Just one side or the other is out at all times, and I haven't figured that out yet. That's, that's about my only ho-hum is, you know, a little plastic door. But the engine has been fantastic. The suspension has been fantastic. The gas mileage has been fantastic. The fact that you have a fuel gauge right there telling you exactly where you're at is fantastic. There's motorcycles at this price that don't have that. You know, they're getting there, but it's nice to see to have a fuel gauge. It's just these little things that make this little, little scooter enjoyable and practical. And that's what some people need is just enjoyability and practicality. Because let's face it, a used car that's gonna be a $2,000 used car or $2,500 used car isn't going to be very good at all. A motorcycle in that same area, you might find a good one here or there, but it's still not going to have the storage and everything built into it ready to go. And that is the pleasant thing about this little scooter right here. Is that it is indeed practical, easy to use, fun to ride, easily approachable. If you're brand new into motorcycling, this is a great place to start for real. If you're really wanting to learn how to ride, I would recommend starting on something like this just to see what it's like. That way you don't have to add the clutch in. Step your way up. Use this as a stepping stone. But then once you get the motorcycle and you have the clutch and you're doing all that stuff, then not only that, keep this as a way to take around town and enjoy. Not take the motorcycle all the time. This is a great little place to start and just continue to ride. As an experienced rider, one that rides 
everything from high-end super sports down to the lowliest of low. I'm telling you, I'm having just as much or more fun on this than I do some of the motorcycles that I have rode. And that says quite a bit for somebody who's had all the experience that I have had. I even train people on motorcycles. And I don't have as near as fun on some of those trainer motorcycles that I am on this right now. Except for the TU250, that thing just beats everything because that thing's a blast. But, man, I'm impressed. And I am happy to take this out. I'm not paid by Freedom Scooters in any way. I asked them and uh, they provided me a scooter to ride around with to see what I thought about it, to tell you guys about it because they're brand new. They wanna show up, they wanna be in this industry. And like I said, we do have an underserved scooter community within this state, but also I believe in the entire United States. There's a pretty good amount of scooter bias out there. Everybody wants to just jump on the Grom or the motorcycle when in reality, this is a, this is a happier place to be. I honestly think it rides better than a Grom. I think it rides better than the Z125 I had. I've taken the Z125 out on these roads many times before I ended up selling it. And I would rather be here because the Z125 had no storage on it. It was highly impractical. The only thing it got good was gas mileage. So I had to carry a backpack. I had to feel cramped on it. I, you know, despite the fact that I fit it, yes, it still, there wasn't like much room to move around. Whereas on this one, I had plenty of room to move around. My feet are in good spot. Everything is happy. This is just a happier place to be. And it comes in less than those machines and it can hold about the same speed if not a little bit better from those as well since it's slightly bigger but it is lighter it's lighter than the Grom and the Z125 it has a lot going for it it really really does and I want to thank Freedom Scooters for allowing me the opportunity to take this machine out for a week and ride it like I would own it because it really gave me a new and fresh perspective on the scooters and what they're capable of and how much fun they really can be. So once again, this is the Rabbit Hedgehog with the Freedom Scooters Veracruz 150. Check out them if you're in Oklahoma, if you're in the Tulsa area at Synergy or Maxis in Oklahoma City. I actually saw one of these in the wild uh, yesterday, actually. It was the same one, Veracruz 150 in the white. And I saw one that came from Maxis out in the wild at one of our Edmund Herd on Herd things. So I know that they're starting to move around, but I'm telling you, if you're looking for that first mode of transportation, because let's face it, transportation is freedom. And if you have your first set of wheels and this is your first set of wheels, <laughs> congratulations you're going to be free. I'm telling you, you are going to be free and you're going to love it. And you're just going to smile the whole time you're riding because this is an absolute little joy to ride. Even on more rural roads, even on city streets, you just, you just get a smile and you get waves from people. And you get one of the coolest details in the world, the American flag headlight. What more can you ask for? I'm telling you, this has been the most pleasant and most fun surprise that I have had in a long time. It's comfortable, smooth operating, a blast to ride, easy to get onto, easy to enjoy, easy to operate. And if you're looking for basic transportation, like I said, there is absolutely no other place to be than something like this that's able to just take you around and do exactly what you need to do with it. All right, so at any rate, this is the Rabbit Hedgehog on the Freedom Scooter, Veracruz 150 once more. 
Check them out in the description below. And I promise you, if you're looking for that second motorcycle, you're looking for that first mode of transportation, you're looking to get into motorcycling, you're looking to continue motorcycling, this is not a bad place to be. Keep that shiny side up, folks, and we'll catch you on the next ride.